Warning, this comic, and by extension this fan dub, contains spoilers for Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. So yeah, if you don't want to have the big, big plot twist of the entire game spoiled for you in this comic, go play it before you read this, or listen to this. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of dragging this on so you'll have a reason to go and, you know, click out of the tab, or window, or just click a link or something to get away from this video, because it's, yeah, it's kind of got a really big spoiler for it, and by a big, really big spoiler, I mean it pretty much tells exactly what's going on, so if you haven't already be played the game, you're going to find out about all of it. So yeah, that's that, and without further ado, let's begin Ace Attorney Dual Destinies, Dual Destination. You can't outrun yourself! Remove that mask and unleash your emotions! Confront your guilt head-on, with your own true face! My own true face? Hold it! That was... The judge! <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to try that. I'm sorry for interrupting. I confess I'd like to see this fellow's face myself, but wasn't there some discussion that revealing an identity could be dangerous? I seem to recall... A former ninja I met in the clink said that exposing those who work in the shadows is to pass the death sentence upon them. There was some mention of it. There's a number of organizations that want him dead. If people believed I was the Phantom... Several times now. I could be killed on the spot! Good grief, his boldness is right. We nearly got carried away. Actually, there's still some things that don't add up. Uh, Apollo? Take the knife for starters. Why use this as Clay's murder weapon? You already had a gun, and no doubt many other means knowing your gadgetry. Furthermore, why this particular knife? We can assume it is the same knife which Athena used to stab your hand all those years ago. Smuggling it into the Space Center was an unnecessary risk to begin with, and using it simply linked this crime to the one seven years ago. But Apollo! He was trying to frame me! Yes, but that's another problem. Why you? He could have implicated anyone he wanted. Yet he chose to point the blame at you specifically. If you're done trying to destroy your own case, your people are never satisfied. I needed to use a weapon that could have been found at the Space Center. The knife was available to me and pointed to someone familiar with the site. There. Simple. Ah, uh, glasses. He had spare glasses. But that doesn't explain everything. The fact that the bullet from your gun ruptured Clay's oxygen tank is also very odd. Clay must have already been dead, so he was on the ground, and his body was nowhere near the south entrance where the director was stood when you fired. You could not have possibly been aiming at the director. So why shoot it when it would leave evidence of another person and weapon at the scene of a crime? You even introduced the existence of the tape, which you captured from leaving the robotics lab. A tape which you had every reason and opportunity to destroy. You also invite me to stay and listen to Ted Tenet's claim that he saw the hand of a person who stole the bomb's remote. All we had to do was ask what he'd seen in detail. Your white gloves and suit are really distinctive. You went so far as to blow up a courthouse to destroy the moon rock, yet you handed us the photograph of the pieces the police had found. It's inconceivable that you will miss that distinctive piece of rock in the collection, knowing how vital it was to your identity. There is likely even evidence on you this very moment. It might not be conclusive, but to find a scar could strongly aid the case. And we have footage to back up that testimony. But most strangely of all, you are fully aware of the possibility of being assassinated here. And you have proven beyond a thousand doubt that you could have left this court if you chose so. But you stayed. Bobby Fulbright, the Addle Patch Detective. Nobody would have questioned if he had made this number of mistakes. But you, the Phantom? A spy who runs rings around the police for more than seven years. It reeks of self sabotage! Yes, well, I've been out of service for a year. Perhaps I am a little rusty. Besides, what motive could I possibly have to be caught? Precisely my point. It's the biggest contradiction of them all. Using the same telephone warning, the same knife, the same group of suspects, you did everything that you possibly could do to link the Hat 2 sabotage to that of Hat 1. Yet, proving the two events were orchestrated by the same person had literally no advantage. At least not for the culprit. 
right, Donner. What are you insinuating? I'm sorry, Prosecutor Blackquill, but the evidence is piled high in favor of my theory. Yes, uh, he told me not to tell you people, actually. But I guess there's no sense hiding it anymore. His execution date is tomorrow. Ugh, I want to do something. I want to, but you're a lawyer. You know how hard it is to overturn a decision. So you can see how this phantom and Prosecutor Blackwell's conviction might be related. Proving that these two incidents were both committed by the same person had one and only one advantage. And that was to prove Simon Blackwell innocent. <sighs> oh dear, Mr. Lawyer. You go through all that trouble to prove I'm the Phantom, because I have no emotions. And now you claim that I wanted to save somebody? I have no affection for anyone, less still a man for whom I was forced to endure the guise of a dim-witted detective for an entire year. I had no reason to save him, or give myself up. You, yourself, have proven this. Well, uh, I'll admit I haven't quite figured out all the details, but... He's lying. What? Just now? Right when he said he was forced to endure being Fulbright? My bracelet reacted. Athena, do you think we could... Way ahead of you. Thank you. Your Honor? The defense moves that we cannot adjourn until we know the entire truth beyond this man's actions. And to that end... You would like to conduct a short therapy session? Of course! Is that popcorn? I must say, I do quite enjoy them. Fine. I will summarize. I knew that Simon Blackwell had in his possession some form of lead on my identity, although I didn't know what that lead was precisely. At the beginning of this year, I found out that a man called Fulbright was to be transferred to Blackwell's prison as his personal carer. He had few relatives and friends who would notice a change. I acted quickly. Unfortunately, as a consequence, I had no time to study his behavior. I had taken his face, but I had no basis for a personality. Bobby Fulbright was a blank canvas. All I knew was that a detective was seen as a good guy, someone who hunted down criminals, a hero. I decided to keep it simple. In justice we trust! And that's all there was to it. He felt something? I don't know, but there's noise. Phantom, lying will only make this last longer. Tell us the truth. Fine. When I introduced myself for the first time, something strange happened, and it would keep happening. Bobby Fulbright made people happy. I'd known before that I could manipulate people by saying certain things, but I hadn't been trying to, didn't try to. People became friends with me. They came to me for help, or just to talk. At first I played along to fit into my role. But I began to be Bobby involuntarily. I was fascinated. I felt no joy, but will and intellect are not related to emotion. I started to wonder, was Bobby more real than I was? Then there was Prosecutor Blackquill. The way he presented his emotions was strange. At first, I thought he might even be like me, unfeeling or unable to emote. Yet, he'd willingly taken the blame for a crime he hadn't committed for six years? I was vexed, but after a while, I understood. It wasn't just to make somebody happy, but also to prevent a passing on an injustice. He had been convicted wrongly, yes, but if he escaped, someone else would be. I uh, admired him for that. I tried my best to make his existence more enjoyable, but his seven years were almost over. Despite my deeds, I didn't want him dead. A new problem arrived. The satellite was returning to Earth, his date of execution due shortly after. I decided to solve both at once. Balderdash! You feel no compassion, no guilt, you had no motive. You are correct. I do not feel emotions as you do. I have deceived you, and yet these three have an uncanny ability of noticing whenever a person lies to them, or even to themselves. But I must ask them, how often have they observed me doing so? Well, there was that one time, but it was about the bomb warning's cover-up, and I don't think Cyclops are a thing you can fake, or at least fake a reason for. If you mean before this trial, I've never picked up on a tell, not even once. 
I mean, it's not like I was wearing that eye patch the whole time. And I've never noticed anything strange about his voice before. But that means he's been telling the truth? But he's been lying about who he is. How the heck does that work? Don't look at me! Gabbling fools all. I need to think this through. The spy was leading a double life, but he showed no signs of lying at all. How is that possible? He was being true to himself. Right. There is no inner conflict. There would be nothing to pick up on. But what was his truth? What was his constant? Justice. Right. Fulbright wouldn't stop talking about justice. He also appeared genuinely concerned when I strayed from it. But how can that be? How could a man with no emotions have a sense of right and wrong? Justice is not an emotion. Fulbright. All that jibber-jabber about trusting in justice, that it shouldn't be swift and true, you actually meant it, didn't you? Huh? So, the Master of Psychology finally earns his title. OBJECTION! So why did you kill Clay? If all you wanted was to clear Prosecutor Blackquill's name, then you just had to sabotage the- Uh, actually, about that, I didn't intend to kill him. I don't believe- Wait, Apollo. I think he might be telling the truth. He brought the knife in order to tie the crimes together, but there are far easier methods to kill someone wearing an extremely tough spacesuit. Recall if you will that the lounge was very dark at the time, save for one area on the astronauts' suits, the lights at the top of the zippers. It's true. I only intended to leave the knife stuck in the suit, but by some fluke the area I aimed at was a weak point. Spies aren't assassins, we try to avoid killing. It complicates things. Dr. Sykes' death was similarly unplanned. She found me trying to sabotage the satellite. I was young. I acted in haste. Whether you believe me or not is your own concern. But keep in mind I have no reason to lie at this point. My original objective had been to destroy that moon rock as well. I wanted to clear Blackwell's name, but also keep my identity. But after that, it wasn't justified. I left the capsule, waited for the director, shot to leave the bullet, then made my escape. I later pointed the blame at Athena to make sure Mr. Starbuck didn't take the fall. Which brings us around to Apollo's original question. Why Athena? Oh, well that's simple. Because of you, Mr. Wright. M me Because I'd seen you in court. I knew I could rely on you to get the right verdict, to keep defending your client against all odds. Especially if they were your friend. You spoke before of my lack of trust, but you were mistaken. Trust is not strictly emotional. It's based on proof. I trusted you, Mr. Wright. I just didn't think you'd go this far. But if you had taken off that mask... I would have been shot. Yes, very probably. Preposterous! Why? Because I know what I am. And I know you need this. Yes, you more than anyone, Chief Prosecutor. If the Phantom were to vanish, one way or another, it would help restore the legal world's balance, no? The Dark Age of the Law. Humans really love villains, don't they? Falling heroes, demons, ghosts. Something, anything to give a reason for the chaos. But I do not enjoy chaos. I have no feelings, after all. True, as the Phantom I was partly responsible for starting the Dark Age. But I had not planned for it to happen, any more than Mr. Wright here. Still, what a tidy reason for all this corruption and deceit to exist. Surely, just as the fall of a hero had started it, the death of this monster could bring it to an end. You might not think it, but I became a spy for justice, to help find hidden truths. I destroyed my own self to do so, but I have done that for selfish reasons. I had been so focused on the big picture. It was only when I became Bobby Fulbright that I began to understand. But it was too late. I was already a monster. I had to end it all somehow. So I thought, perhaps, if I was to die as the Phantom, to destroy him, I could help justice one last time. So that's what all that was. What? He planned all this. This happy ending. Blowing up the courthouse to provide an insecure location for his exposure. Giving up his cheerful persona only part way through our cross-examination. His end justified his means. 
He had to be unmissable in two ways. Just as his MO with the bombs warned the Space Center, he wanted to limit the number of casualties. He practically spelled out for us with that namesake toy. He knew what he wanted, a verdict and a death sentence all in one. This trail of breadcrumbs was designed to lead us to a single resolution, where the villain disappears from the world, and justice is restored. You were never meant to find this line of reasoning. Nevertheless, this ending is still within your command. I make no pretense. I am the murderer you seek. I'm the man who killed your friend, and I'm the man who killed your mother. And that cursed knife, a knife I held onto for seven whole years. Do you know, I never was sure why I kept it. Perhaps I knew? Well, no matter. My life ended a long time ago. If either one of you asks me to take off this mask now, I shall. Miss Sykes, Mr. Justice, a word, if I may. Prosecutor Edgeworth? You know, it is a curious thing. When I was in Europe, I saw a play, Orestes. It featured both Athena and Apollo. It is based on the trial of a man who killed his mother in return for killing his father, etc. An unbroken chain of just deaths that had continued spanning back over many years. It fell to the goddess Athena to decide if he should also die in turn or be spared. But Mr. Edgeworth, I'm not a goddess any more than Apollo's a god. Oh, thanks. My point is that your choice here is very similar indeed. To be on the side of arcane law or to break that chain of unending death to move on. It is probably not fair to ask you to make this choice. Yet, as the situation stands, it is yours to make. I have no real right to stop you. Indeed. It is usually me who makes such choices. Your Honor, this is no time to be jealous. I... I... I don't know what to do! Everyone's hearts are shouting different things! Well, I know my choice. Apollo? Clay wouldn't want another death to avenge his own. That isn't true justice. Not for me, or for him. But what your justice is, is up to you, Athena. My... justice? That's right! All of these years, I lost those memories because I couldn't hear that sound. I need to listen to it now. The voice of my own heart! Well, in that case... Ow! What the- What kind of idiot do you take me for? You think I'm gonna make this easy for you? You wanted to destroy the Phantom as a symbol, to re-establish some kind of justice. But wouldn't all that just continue the lie? This darkness is multifaceted. It is idiocy to pin the blame on a single entity, childish even. There is no easy cure, no shortcut. We need to banish the doubt from our hearts, not find a scapegoat to sacrifice. All these demons are just masks, whether we wear them ourselves or place them upon others. We called you a monster for having no emotions, but we are not the only beings to have feelings. Ergo, Having emotions is not the definition of being human, and vice versa. Humans are not so simple, and neither is justice. Using lies to reach justice only leads to more lies. We have to be able to accept our truth, whatever it is. And besides, don't be so selfish. This isn't a trial to decide your fate. It's my trial to decide mine. <sighs> Your Honor, I suggest the witness be moved to a secure location where he may await a fair trial at a later time. Yes, quite so, quite so. Bailiff? Hmm. Don't think you're getting away from me so easily either. I'm well known for my interrogation skills, and from the looks of it, I still have plenty to pry from those jaws of yours. Oh. Good luck! I've been a top-ranking spy for well over seven years! I look forward to seeing you try! <laughs> well, now that we have that all out of the way, I believe it is finally time for Miss Sykes' verdict.